Hello and welcome to our study on this Thursday, January the 28th, 2021. It's hard to believe January is almost gone. Today we are studying Psalm 122 and the title of today's study is, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It actually comes from Psalm 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And today I want to just take a brief little time to talk about why I love coming to the house of God, why I love coming to worship and coming to study God's word and coming to fellowship with God's people. And the first reason that I love to, to come to the house of God is church is the place that I worship God. Church is the place that I worship God. Church is the place where I'm reminded of what's most important in life. Church is the place that I'm reminded that, that God Almighty is real, that he spoke the worlds into existence, and that my life is supposed to revolve around him. The church is the place that I learned the meaning of, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Church is the place that I learn, is the place where I, where I learn that if God is not at the center of my life, then nothing else matters. You see, the woods are literally filled with people, some of whom are fabulously successful, fabulously successful by earthly standards, money, fame, notoriety, but their lives are have a big M above them, and the M stands for misery. Johnny Depp, for example. Johnny Depp has made almost $700 million in his film career. By some accounts, he is near bankruptcy. He's burned through four marriages already. Filmmakers will hardly touch him. He seems addicted to alcohol and probably drugs. I read one account where he spends about $1,000 a day, $1,000 a day, you say on electricity? No, on wine, a thousand dollars a day. Uh, his problems with anger are legendary, and he is without God in the world. He is without God in this world, and he is he is miserable. I think of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Same story. He was a film star. He was worth forty million dollars. Forty million dollars. A few years ago, they found him dead in a hotel room bathtub in New York City with a heroin needle still sticking out of his arm and $40 million. And yet he was so miserable that he had to sadly waste his life on heroin. You see, life simply does not work apart from God. I love Psalm 4 verse 7 where the psalmist said, Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and new wine abound. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and new wine abound. In other words, as the people of God, we have more understanding of what true joy and happiness is than, 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 the, than the richest people in the world financially. Uh, some of the happiest people I've ever known were my Aunt Betty and Uncle Jimmy. Uh, Uncle Jimmy is gone, in, gone to glory right now. He, 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 he died about 10 years ago. Uncle Jimmy worked for a company called a plumbing supply company in Decatur called Nolan Company for about 40 years. My Aunt Betty managed the cafeteria at Danville Elementary School. And they served a little church in Lawrence County, Alabama, Enon Baptist Church. I think it's actually the oldest church oldest Baptist church in the state of Alabama. It was started in 1821. And my Aunt Betty and Uncle Jimmy were the, the kind of folks that anytime you showed up, they were happy to see you. Most of the time, if you showed up at their house, they would have a rook game going. If Uncle Jimmy was home and anybody was there, they were probably around their big old uh, dinner table and they were probably playing a game of rook with whoever had showed up. Um, I think of my Aunt Betty and Uncle Jimmy, and I think of spending time with them at their house. And, and I literally think that my Uncle Jimmy 
had 10,000 times the happiness in his life that Johnny Depp had um, and that Philip C. Seymour Hoffman had put together. All Uncle Jimmy did was love his family and love the Lord and raise two sons to do the same. You see, I love coming to, to church because church is where I worship God and I find the true meaning in life. But then secondly, uh, churches, I love coming to God's house. I love coming to church because it's where I hear about Jesus. God has decreed that the primary avenue through which our world would hear about Jesus is through the church. Um, I think of the Apostle Paul who said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. The Apostle Paul said, when I came to the Corinthian church to visit you, I didn't come with a bunch of flowery words and, 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 and fancy theologies. He said in verse 2, For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The Apostle Paul said, All I wanted to emphasize was Jesus when I was with you. He said that was my one job. And you see, uh, I'm thankful that I grew up in churches that understood that principle. I'm thankful that that I, I learned about Jesus as a child from vacation Bible school teachers and from Sunday school teachers and from pastors and evangelists. It was in a church when I was eight years old that I heard about Jesus' love for me and that I could turn my life over to him and that I could go to heaven one day and I could avoid hell. And I can remember as a little eight-year-old walking down the aisle and taking our pastor's hand and saying, Brother Waddell, I need to be saved. Um, you see, the, the fact of the matter is I love coming to church because I love hearing about Jesus. I love that old song. Uh, I love to tell the story. And you know the second verse, I love to tell the story to those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory we, we sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love coming to church because I love talking about Jesus. I love singing about Jesus. I love hearing about Jesus. I love seeing Jesus express himself through other believers at church. So that's the second reason I love coming to church. But the third reason I love coming to church is church is where I am taught about the word of God, just like we're doing here. God's word is spiritual nourishment. God's word is spiritual peace. God's word is spiritual direction. God's word is spiritual truth. Um, I've told you, that when God called me to preach, I was more interested in my dreams than I was in God's plans for my life. And so when God called me to preach, I pretty much said, uh, I'm sorry, but you have got the wrong person. I'm going to be an engineer and I've got my, my life planned out. And it was almost like the Lord said, okay, that's your plan. You go be happy. You go find happiness on your terms. I had a friend named Larry Joe Bell and Larry Joe bought a brand new bass boat from uh, Anderson Boats down in Coleman, Alabama uh, that summer that I felt God called me to preach and that I told God no. And, uh, and Larry Joe and I spent the whole summer fishing and water skiing and doing all those things that, that young people love to do during the summer. And here's what I found. The, the more I pursued my dreams apart from what God wanted me to do, the more I pursued my, you know, the, the things I wanted to do, I had a good job it, it, when I was in junior college. I had money in the bank. I, had, I, I could pretty much buy what I wanted to buy. I've still got some stereo speakers that I bought back uh, years ago uh, during that time. Uh, so uh, I, bought a, I, I bought the car I wanted because I was working so much back then. And and so I had all these things that I thought was that I thought were going to make me happy, but none of them made me happy. And then I started going to Central Baptist Church 
I started listening to Brother Mike Dawson preach God's word, and I started finding true nourishment and true joy, and I got to where I was almost obsessed with going to church. I couldn't wait for Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night because God Almighty was feeding my soul. Um, why do I love coming to church? I love coming to church because it's where I'm taught the Word of God. I've always loved the story that Cliff and Brendel Parsley told me years ago. Cliff was working on the arsenal, and and Brendel was picking him up. And for some reason, on this whatever Wednesday night, uh, Cliff got off late. And so they were not going to be able to make it to Wednesday night supper. And so when Cliff got in the car, Brendel looked at him and Cliff said, you know, honey, we're not going to be able to make it to Wednesday night supper. And Brendel looked at him and said, well, go ahead and buckle your seatbelt because we can make it for the Bible study. And then he said, they, they came in right at the right time for the Bible study that night. And I've always laughed about that, but I've always appreciated it simply because Cliff and Brendel Parsley, who have followed God and loved God and studied his word their entire lives, even, uh, uh, even in their 60s, they couldn't wait to get to God's house to study his word because of the nourishment factor that it gave them. I love coming to God's house because I love studying God's word, but I also love, love coming to God's house because church is where I am loved by God's people. Uh, I am glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When I'm in, when I come to church, I find that there's a place for me with all my idiosyncrasies, with all my person, but with all my uh, weird things about my personality, and with all my faults, with all my needs. I love that old song. In this very room, speaking about church in this very room, there's quite enough love for one like me. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. For Jesus, Lord Jesus, is in this very room. And I find that when I come to God's house and I'm around God's people, I inevitably always leave feeling better because I've been with people who love me, who have my back. Church is a place where I'm loved by God's people. But church is also a place where I'm comforted in my grief. I've seen this many, many times. I've seen it in my life as well. Church is the place that stands by you when you experience the moments of grief in life. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Um, I love telling the story of Elaine Boyette. Uh, she was the wife of the chairman of our deacons in our previous church. And their family had a death of some type. I think it was actually the Elaine's mother passed away, Miss Ann Woodward, Woodard. And they had some family members come in from Tennessee uh, to stay with them over, over the weekend while we had the funeral for Miss Ann. And they, they didn't attend to the, these folks didn't attend church up in, up in Tennessee. And one of the cousins said to Elaine, you know what? We're going to have a, we, we got a big family. This, this is going to be a big funeral. And after the funeral, don't you think we're going to need to buy some food when everybody comes back to your house? And Elaine said, well, our church, Mount Hugh Baptist Church is providing the food. And the cousin said, well, we've got a big family. How do you know there's going to be enough food? Elaine said, there, there'll be enough food. Don't worry about it. The cousin said, but don't you think we should be prepared to buy food if, if there isn't enough? Elaine said, if there's not enough, I'll call them and they'll bring more. And of course, what happened was after the funeral, our church provided food for an army so that that, that cousin was, was absolutely uh, flabbergasted in a very good way as to as the love expressed through our church. Um, you know, it's, it's not just food, it's support. It's a willingness to talk about the, the loved one that's passed away. It's a willingness to listen when you cry. It's the fact that 
that that when you go through grief, you know that you've got hundreds of people who love you and who will stand beside you. But then finally, I love coming to God's church because I church is a place where I'm reminded of my hope in eternity. I don't mind telling you I'm a pie-in-the-sky Christian. I don't mind telling you I love singing songs about heaven. I don't mind telling you that I love singing about when we all get to heaven and what a day that will be. I love singing the last uh, verse of Amazing Grace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we'll, there's, we'll have no less days to sing God's praise than when we've just begun. Church is a place where John 14, 1 through 3 is celebrated. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Church is the place that I'm reminded that I'll see our daughter again one day. Church is the place that, that I'm reminded that I'll see my father one day. Church is a place that I'm reminded that when we're all gone, I'll see you one day. We'll have all eternity with God. Today, I am i don't mind telling you, I love coming to God's church, and I know you do too. And Lord willing, very, very soon, we'll be back together just like we used to be. God bless you, and have a great day.